Welcome to the Spinner Rack with your hosts, Brian and Junior. So welcome back to the Spinner Rack, issue 24. We're getting up there, man. Yep. Doing work, son. Show. Part two of our Walking Dead extravaganza. This time focusing on the TV show. As always, I'm your host, Big B. Brian Adams. Joining me as always, my co-host. Junior, co-host of Comics Remix. Thank you for listening, peoples. Now, as you heard from the last issue, we have much love for Robert Kirkman's Walking Dead. And that love has translated over to the TV show. Mm -hmm. Um, I love the TV show, man. Casting on Walking Dead, I like everybody. I like the direction they took with things. I really appreciate the fact that they did not immediately kill Shane. Yeah, that was interesting. Because they did, the writers for that show really took Shane in like a crazy and unique direction from what he is in the comics. Because if you think about it, Shane is Rick's first nemesis in this. And it kind of set up the emotional tone of the show. You know, yeah, there's zombies, people are fighting to survive, but how, how can you relate to that? You know, you can't relate to a zombie chasing you because it's not real. How do you relate to it? Okay, your supposed best friend is banging your wife. That's relatable. That's definitely relatable. You know what I mean? So it kind of added a little bit more of that human element, the emotional element you need. It humanized everything here. It did. It really did. <clears throat> um, I didn't watch any of it when it was on TV. Or I should say as it comes out. Um, it came out. I was like, oh, I've got to watch this, but I never did. When the first season was released, I picked it up and I watched the first season all in one sitting. All six episodes. And I was just like, I got to go read the damn comics. You know? And uh, when I read the comics again, I was just like, wow. Uh, while I was watching the first season, the second season was airing already. So that's part of the reason why I, did, I didn't watch the second season at all. No. But I've seen bits and pieces of it <clears throat> because my girl's parents watch it religiously. Mm-hmm. So I would always walk in and they'd be watching it. Or like her old man would be like, Junior, you got to sit down and watch this. Look at how gruesome this is. You know, Look at this dumb fuck over here. Chase, getting chased by the zombies and just making fun of it, you know. And then um, they grew up, for those that don't know, uh, my girl's parents, they all grew up with Michael Rooker. Uh, um, my my father-in-law, his brother is married to Michael Rooker's sister. So that's another reason they watch the show, because of Rooker. Not that they're fans of his, but just because they know him. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, oh, yeah, I know I'm going to watch the show. It happens. So, you know, he'd always be like, yeah, as much as whatever the, the history is between them, he'd always be like, dude, look at fucking Rooker, what he's doing now. You know? And you're like, okay. And that was with the first season, you know, and shit like that. Because he didn't show up, and he was in the second season, right? Yeah. So, I mean, he that's why he, he was, was in. There is a scene in the second season where uh, they're looking for Sophia. Okay. Because that's pretty much the majority of what the second season is about. Okay. Sophia goes missing. And Daryl is looking for Sophia, and he gets attacked by a zombie, and he kills it, and he falls. Mm-hmm. And he fucks himself up, and I believe he falls on one of his own arrows. Okay. And he's fucked up, like, half dying, and he has a vision okay. of, uh, of, his of his brother. But okay. that right. was something that was there. But yeah, I watched the first season, like I said, the second season I didn't watch on TV. That was already... That's, that was almost a good choice, man. Yeah. Not to... Not to poo-poo the show, but the second season for me, man, was really... Not that I didn't want to watch the second out, season. Man. It was just well, That's what I heard. But it's not that I didn't want to watch the second season. Like, I just... I don't jump in a show if I don't yeah, watch it from do the I. beginning. It's like my comics. But like I said, I. I had... It was already on when I was watching the first season. So it's like, I'll wait till the second like, season comes out, and then I'll watch it. Like, if you just happen to be flicking... Like, here's, here's an example. I just happened to flip through TV... I caught like five minutes of Justified. Okay. And then I was like, I'm not watching this. And then I went and downloaded all the previous seasons of Justified and watched it from the beginning. Right. Which, because I'm like that too. I don't want to jump into the middle and have Well, see, that's what I did. I, I, was, I was like, I'll watch the second season when it comes out. Because I was like, I, at that time, I was like, I know the second season will be out on Blu ray before the third season airs. So I can watch it in the off season and catch up and then watch the third season from the jump, you know? So you haven't, to this, to this day, right now, I still not have watched. not watched oh the second season. I had time. I did shit, pick man. it up. I did pick you it up. Watch this shit. I walked, last Christmas, we walked into Target about a week before Black Friday, and they had the Blu-ray special edition, whatever the oh, hell. Oh, with the sound head with the screwdriver in it? No, 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 no
pack, not the slim one. Oh, okay. But it's got like all the extra bonus features right, right. and shit like that. Seventeen dollars on Blu-ray Damn, at awesome. Target. I was like, mine. You know, so but I just haven't had a chance to watch. I'm trying to get my girl into it, but she don't want to watch it. Really, that sucks. Yeah, she just doesn't want to watch it. So, but um, so I haven't watched the second. The one uh, I did watch in the second season, most of the last episode where they introduced Michonne. Right. I was like in and out of the house at that time, like I was walking in front of the TV. So I did remember, like maybe the last five minutes of the show, I sat at the dining room table as I was doing some uh, eBaying, and I just happened to look over as they, her parents were watching it. And I'm, I'm like, ah, oh. and they came out. She came out with the sword. And they didn't show her face. And I'm like, oh, because I knew. And my girl's mom was like, oh, who the fuck is this bad bitch? And I'm like, that's Michonne. I'm like, well, what? And I had to explain it to them, you know, because they hadn't read the books. So, and then the third season rolls around, and then her old man's like, third season premieres, and like, because they gave the, per- the, the, what do you call it, the marathon. Right, right. So he's like, I'm watching the marathon. You watching this with me? I was like, I wasn't there. I, like, I couldn't, I can't do in and out, you know? So the third season airs, and I start sitting down, and then my daughter wakes up and go take care of her, and I'm just like, I'll watch the third season later. But then what turns me off to it, I'm watching it on TV, is the fact that they break up their seasons so bad. It's like, what, they'll give, like, four episodes? Eight seasons. Eight. They do you know? eight, and then they break for a couple months. Right. They and break for the holiday, and then they come back in February and do their other half. Yeah, you know how pissed off that makes people? That does and suck. Unfortunately, if they keep that up, it's going to turn people off. You know what? Uh, to in be my honest, opinion. In, in my opinion, it's actually kind of brilliant because they're, they remove themselves from the competition of hol- holiday programming. True. And... Instead of having to wait an entire year, you get two months of Walking Dead, two month break, two months of Walking Dead, and then eight months later you get Walking Dead again. Yeah. Unlike where shows like Game of Thrones, you get twelve episodes, you get three months of Thrones, an entire year wait to the next season, which to me is fucking terrible. Yeah, but yeah, to this day I haven't watched the second season. I mean, I. I've by talking to you and talking to other people, I kind of know what's like, going on. Like, honestly, I think, I, I want to say that the second season was... They said it was filler from what I heard. I think it was 16 episodes. It might have just been 12 or 14. But, literally, half of that season is them... Looking for Sophia. Looking for Sophia. Yeah. And the introduction of Herschel and his father. Now, let's talk casting. Ca- not even casting, but just characters. Now, the show differs from the comic in terms of certain characters, certain character relationships, like you mentioned earlier. Shane in the TV show lasted a lot longer than he did, than he did in the comic. Uh, they also changed the way he was taken out. He t- in the show, he got turned into a zombie, and then Carl killed him. Whereas in the comic, Carl just straight up shot him for arguing with his dad. Well, let's let's not forget that Rick did stab the shit out of him to kill him. Right. To turn him into the zombie. <laughs> Yeah, but you know what I mean? So I know. It's and then there's certain characters introduced like that are not, like, uh, what was the name of the first series? Okay, like, That's, this is something I wanted to ask you, is that when you first saw, I, I hate to call him the token black guy, and you probably thought... You mean T-Dog? Or the yeah, one? Okay. T-Dog. Okay. You, you probably thought, oh shit, this is so-and-so. You look like D-Lo Brown. For and me. then, it's not. And I was like, what the, what the hell are they doing with this? Right. And, uh... Yeah, where you see a character, you have a different name, you're like, oh, this character is this guy from the comics, they just changed his name or whatever, where it's based off that character. Right. I see what you're saying. You know, at that point, like I said, it had been so long since I had read the books, so I was just like, was he in the issue? I don't remember. But after I had watched that first season is when I went back and reread the entire Walking Dead run. Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, I see what they did. Like I said, they changed characters around, certain characters, you know, they weren't there. And, you know, I was just like, biggest character of all that's not in the comic. Daryl. Totally. Biggest fucking character, hands down, that is not in the comic. Which I believe that... Uh, Most man, popular character. Norman Reedus really is, is petitioning Kirkman to introduce Daryl into the comic. Yeah. But Kirkman won't do it because AMC wants too much money. Yeah. But God, what a great character, dude. Like, what a great character. Totally stole the show. Right? He did. Him and, he did. Yeah, him and his brother. I won't say Rooker. I meant Daryl. Which is the actor. Right. I'm talking about the character, not the actor. Right, right. Both phenomenal. You look at the popularity of Daryl. You know, you see all these uh, memes online of women posting. Oh, the women love Daryl. They love him. Love him. You know, and they're like, it's because he's that like lovable. He's that badass with heart. You know what I mean? Right. Like he's this fatherly figure to Sophia, but he's like fucking people up. Yeah. 
Like, everybody loves Daryl. My girl's mom, she's like, oh, Daryl, 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 Daryl. She loves that fucking guy. <laughs> it could be a Walking Dead spinoff show. Everybody you loves Daryl. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, what? Give me my crossbow. You know, but it's just like, just the popularity of that character. The thing that I read that kind of got under my skin was an interview with Kirkman after the show really took off. And he said something along the lines of that he's writing the show to where he would have wrote it had he known the comic was going to be successful. It's like, well... It's like a dumbass thing to say. Yeah, it's like, well, it's your indie comic anyway. No one has control over it but you. So if this is the way you wanted to write the comic, why didn't you? That's why I feel like nothing against Kirkman, but he has shown a level of... Incompetence? Ego. Oh, of course. Hell yeah. I have an example. One time at Wizard World, way back when I was just still a little fan, I seen Kirkman there, and I knew who he was because of Invincible more than Walking Dead. And people were like, oh, Kirkman's here, Kirkman's here, Kirkman's here. Oh, really cool. He had nobody at his table. He was just chit-chatting. I walked up to him, and I was like, hey, can I get your autograph? He's just like, nah, the line starts over there. Real snotty. What a dick. So I was like, Fuck you! No, no, I didn't say that, but well, there's like better ways to handle that. Like, oh, I'm sorry, man. You know, there's a line of people you gotta respect that. Right. Go to the back of the line. Quite at least I. But he was just like, no, you can't. Have. I was just like, wow, really? What a dick. Yeah, I've noticed because I watched Talking Dead also. Okay. The only one I watched was the one that CM Punk was on. And uh, God, and he that guy. he didn't say a lot. Not really. He's a quiet guy. He let everybody else make a fool of themselves, and he's just right. like, Walking Dead, best in the world. Then move back, you know. He when he was on Talking Dead. He seemed really arrogant. Punk? Kirkman. No, Kirkman. Kirkman. And uh, for him to say, for him to have said that, yeah. that all oh, the TV shows what I would have done if I had known it was going to take off. To me, that's like you're just an asshole. And what happened was, is you got in a room with people that respect what you're doing, but have their own ideas mm-hmm. about how things could have went. Yeah. Like uh, I don't know why I'm going to use the Thrones for an example because probably it's my favorite show. But I have watched now three seasons of Game of Thrones. I've read all the books that are out. In my own mind, I have thought, well, shit, what if this happened instead of this? And there's a bazillion... Like, I could have... If I was given the opportunity by George R. R. Martin to take the Game of Thrones world and do with it as I wanted to, things would be a lot different than they are. Of course. Like, he took it and went... And a lot of it's, like, the execution of fucking characters. Mm-hmm. Which I, I respect the shit out of him and Kirkman for doing. Like, okay, I'm just going to kill the shit out of this guy. Right, but, but I mean, uh, how, what do you, how do you say that and still be respected? You know, yeah, yeah, it's like I, I like it's I, your indie book to begin with. It's, it's better, dude, just to like try and stay humble. I could get it, like you if know? maybe, um, like if it was an established book already and right. he came on, like let's say he was writing Spider Man. Obviously, he didn't create Spider Man, but if he came on and he says, "Well, the Spider Man I wrote for this." would have been the way I would have wrote it had I created the character. Right, totally. That's a different that, thing. That totally makes more sense. But for him to say to say that about something he himself created. Because Kirkman, in my in my eyes, he can't take credit for the what the Walking Dead TV show is because he's not the head writer. No, he's not. There it's is based a group of, of writers. writers. He does have input. Uh, yeah, he does he, have input. But he doesn't have the final word. But I mean, uh, honestly, I, I love the show, but because I was such a big fan of the comic first, they took some direction with characters I didn't appreciate. I really expected to see the Dale Andrea relationship yeah. in the show with the characters that they cast as Dale and Andrea. I'm actually surprised that they killed off Dale so fast in the show. Well, he died in the second season, right? Yeah. Because he got bit or something? Uh, he, no. He's walking through a field. Okay. Er, er, earlier in an episode, I mean, in the episode before, or earlier in the episode Dale dies in, Carl gets his hand on the gun. Because Carl's been fighting to get a gun. And this is like where they, they're building on the Shane Rick butting heads thing. Mm-hmm. And Shane is like, you know, give the kid a gun, teach him how to use a gun. And Rick's like, you know what? You F- bang you. my wife, shut up. Yeah, F you, I'm his dad. Yeah. That's my decision to make, not yours. And Carl steals one of Shane's guns and goes out in the wood and he finds a, a walker that is stuck in like a mud pit. Okay. At like, at, you know, below the knee. Right, right, right. Like probably even below the calf. But enough suction that it can't get out. Mm-hmm. And he's like wanting to shoot it and wanting, to, but he's not. And he's like pussyfooting with the gun, and then it happens to get loose of the suction, and it falls down on him, mm-hmm. but it's not completely loose, and he still doesn't kill it. 
I think he even loses the gun, but okay. he gets away. But that walker gets loose, and then later on now all this shit is going on between the group and Shane. Shane's wanting to, like, on Herschel's farm, Herschel, they find out, has uh, doesn't believe that the walkers are dead. He believes that well, they... Well, didn't he have them locked in the barn or something? Yeah, okay. yeah just like in the comic. He yeah, had all yeah. his relatives and shit locked in the barn. He believes the disease and they can be cured. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't want anyone on his farm carrying guns. Now, Rick, being the leader of the group, out of respect for Herschel, and it's his farm, he's letting him stay there, won't allow him to have guns, but Shane's like, you know, fuck that. Everyone should have guns. It's crazy shit out there. And, and Daryl really butts heads. Not Daryl. Rick. No. Rick and Shane. Herschel. Hersh not Herschel. Rick, Shane, no, Herschel, Dale. those motherfuckers. Dale, Dale and Shane. The guy Shane, we're talking about that I forgot. Yeah, Dale and Shane really start to butt heads. Okay. Because, well, earlier in, in the season, when they, when Herschel, or not Herschel, but, uh, man, I can't remember his name now. Fat oh, you're guy. killing me, Smalls. Fat guy. There's a fat guy. I can't remember his name. There's always a fat guy. The, he, he, the, it's the guy that shoots, uh. Go ahead. It's the guy that shoots Carl. The guy that shoots Carl? Yeah, sh Carl gets shot. In the show? In the show. Well, I didn't know Doesn't that. Doesn't it happen in the book? Yeah, when Rick shot his ass. Rick well, shot no, him in the face. Like, like, isn't that how they end up on Herschel's farm? Is Carl accidentally get shot? I don't remember. Otis. Otis is the Otis. Guy, I think. Okay, so in the show, Carl accidentally gets shot by Otis, who's hunting a deer. Otis shoots this deer, and a fragment of bullet, or some bullet fragments, bounce off the rib cage of this deer when it kills it and yeah. come out the other side and hit Carl. So that's how you get the introduction to Herschel's farm is like Rick there looking for Sophia. Rick carrying Carl's dying body to Herschel's house following Otis. And then Otis is like, you know what? Or Herschel's like, I can save him, but I need this stuff and we don't have it here. And Otis is like, well, I know that there is a first aid station, like a medical station set up by the old school. I'll go there and get the stuff. Mm -hmm. And Shane's like, well, I'm going to come with you. Because at this point, Shane hasn't really descended into the madness that, man, you really need to watch second season. I just here. asked my mom. Because like, Shane, you know, like, just yeah. descends into fucking depths, dude, of insanity. Like, he really becomes very, very dark. But, uh, anyway, he goes with Otis, and then he ends up, like, hurting his ankle. And him and Otis are escaping, but there's this massive swarm of zombies coming after him. And he fucking shoots Otis. So Otis gets sworn by zombies so he can escape. But he just, like, descends into this. And Dale knows this. Dale's positive. He doesn't have proof, but he knows that he killed Otis. Mm -hmm. So they start butting heads, dude, and there's great scenes. So back to the whole point of where this got started. Dale is just wandering around out in the fields by himself. And he comes across a cow that's been massacred. Okay. And then gets attacked by that walker that Carl didn't kill. Mm. And it guts him. Wow. Like, rips his stomach open. Wow. And then everyone hears him scream, and they run out there, kill the walker, and then they're all there. That's the old guys. Wow. So Way more intense of a death than the... Sh than the, the you the, think uh, so? Comic book. I think the so. The fact that they were cutting his limbs off? Well, I mean, that was, that was crazy, but as far as impactful to oh, the right, entire right, right, group, right. it was more intense. Okay, yeah. Um, I can't, you know, I love the show. Uh, and you know to get the final thoughts out there. It was way way quicker, though. That happened with second season where in the books he didn't die. Yeah, no, it was a long time. Yeah, it was a long time. Um, I love the show. I'm a big fan of the show, but second season dragged. Andrea sucks. I'm glad she died. She did die in the show, right? Yeah, she did. Like, I don't understand that. You see, she's obviously a pivotal character in the comics, and they kill her. Well, off. that's 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 my whole point. Is she was not the same fucking character. Mm -hmm. From the comics. Now, from what I understand, because I, I, I saw more of season... I didn't watch all of season three, but I saw more of season three than I did, uh, obviously, season two. So, people are like, oh, Rick and Michonne are going to end up together. And that's just stupid, because they're the both... The, the most popular male character and the popular female character are going to end up together. It's been done. It's I, I think the only reason people say that they is mean, they because... They have, have uh, Rick raped the governor. They... Yeah, right. With this nub. They, Who sees uh, that coming? Yeah, they have, they see you eye to eye a lot. And at first, he doesn't trust her, but because they are so like-minded, yeah, because Rick's a racist, <laughs> they uh, he they end up, like, becoming, like, close, close. but not, like, yeah. a moon. 
stick my jungle I'm finger. I'm gonna stick my dick in finger. you. Yeah, <laughs> there's no jungle fever. But I mean, there's there. Are, uh, final thoughts for me. There are points of the show that were great. There are points of the show not so great. Don't like what they did with Andrea. Love what they did with Shane. Okay. And Daryl. Everybody loves Daryl. That's the that's the show. That is the show. That's the show. We should get that on a T-shirt. Everybody loves Daryl, but don't put where it's from. People are gonna be like, "What? The spinner rack?" Right. You know, like and Daryl and his <laughs> his knife hand. It's crazy. Fucking oh. Rooker, man. Maybe they did that because they weren't. Maybe you know, instead of cutting off Rick's hand, they did. It I Rooker. think so. You know what I mean? It's kind of incorporated without yeah. incorporating it. So. But it's a good show. I mean, and now we're about a month out. By the time you're listening to this, we'll be about a month away from season four. And, uh, you know, I, I appreciate that it has went on its own course. Because right. as a reader of the comic book, if it would have been verbatim what the comic book was... Sometimes that's cool, but sometimes it gets I would have probably been like, okay, I'm bored of this. I know what's going to happen. Right, right, right. Any, any final thoughts for you on the TV show? Oh, um, Your ass needs to go home and watch season two. It's funny because while you're explaining, I'm, you see, I'm playing on my phone. I actually text my mom because you know most of my stuff's in storage. I have season one of The Walking Dead on DVD, but season two on Blu-ray. All my Blu-rays are at my mom's house, but I don't remember seeing it. So I asked her, "Can you do me a favor? Can you walk into my room and see if my Walking Dead is there?" And she goes, "Yeah, it's a four-disc set." Why? Yes. I just finished watching season two of The Power Rangers. I was going to start season three tonight when they get the ninja powers. I think I might watch Walking Dead. We'll see, because, you know, I can watch it on the weekends. I watch no, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, Netflix. like I said. I now, remember. Walking Dead is not on Netflix, correct? No, it is. Okay. Uh, not so I'll have to watch Walking Dead on the weekends and Power Rangers during the weekend. No, I'm sure. I'm not exactly sure if it is. On. It was at one point. I'm not sure. But I'm going to tell you right now, first half of the season, real slow. Once they, like, the best shit really is the descent of Shane. Of Shane. And then... I knew and like, butting heads. it was going to set the tone when I watched the first episode and uh, how Lori and Shane are in the, the, the forest where they're joking around and then all of a sudden they start kissing I'm like yeah they're going to bang but the, gra- like, the the graphic without being graphic when he bent her over you could tell he, she was bent over I was like ooh this is the I was like this is the direction the show is going to go in alright awesome. awesome dude and like I heard that oh, 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 music good show man you know Best non-point scene ever. Nice. <laughs> oh man, Walking Dead. Wow. Just Got a lot, man. It's everywhere. If you're if you if you're just listening to this, yeah, trading cards, dolls, action everywhere. Figures, clothing. Everywhere. You know it's a hit when your mom likes it. Yeah, right? Yeah, totally. You know? And my mom likes it. And people that you never would step foot in a comic book store. So many people have been you know, introduced to the world of comic books now because of this show. Now, do you think that the success of this show has other TV studios? Look- well, I don't even think because I know it's like okay, the success that Walking Dead has done uh, for the comic to the show. Obviously, the show picked it up because of the comic. Right. Or right. AMC, excuse me, AMC picked it up because of the comic. Now, like, what's next? That's the question because we all know Walking Dead will not be around forever. Hopefully, Preacher. <laughs> wow. I would love to see Preacher on HBO or Showtime. That'd be some crazy. And it would have to be on HBO or Showtime. Yeah. Because the topics and just the general subject You don't think it could be on the EMC? No. Okay. No. Especially not like, you know, the shit with the... I can't remember his... God, it's been a long time since I read Preacher. Preacher was fucked up. But the main character guy that's after him... Yeah. The guy that ends up with one eye and the carving in his head so his head looks like a big penis... Arse face. No, oh, not no. our space. It's Air Star. Okay, yeah, yeah. He yeah. ends up getting like ass raped and shit. Yeah. And his man junkets, man. You're not gonna be able to put that shit even on AMC. Yeah. There's just some, and, and it's heavily, it heavily bashes on the Christian religion at some points too, man. Yeah, that's true. So it'd be kind of hard to. It's crazy. I mean, The Walking Dead. I could see them selling to AMC, but coming and be like, "All right, I got this idea. It's a comic book. It's called Preacher, written by Garth Ennis, drawn by Steve Dillon. It's about this preacher that loses his faith, but then." is possessed by the spawn of an angel and a demon, and he now has the power of God, and he teams up with his girlfriend, whose father was a hitman and a vampire. No. Pass him. Yeah. It's got to be on H- James Marston, dude, was trying to push that shit. It was supposed to be on HBO. Yeah. And Love James Marston was going to be the, pe- the preacher. But, you know, because of The Walking it. Dead now, these studios are really paying attention. There were so many books that have come out in the last year that it's rumored to be picked up. Uh, Peter Panzerfaust. 
oh, yeah? by Image Comics. BBC picked it up. Nice. Number one goes for over a hundred bucks. So yeah, if that does well, BBC, you know you'll see an American version of it. Of course, um, <laughs> because of Robert Kirkman's name, when he launched Thief of Thieves, they're like, oh, it picked it up for a show. So the first issue shot up to 80, uh, 80 bucks because it's supposed to be a show. Yeah, I haven't heard anything yet. There's, even the steam on the comic has slowed down greatly. Uh, there was another one that, that was just recently. Uh, it's supposed to be a TV show. I, I hear why it's supposed to be getting made into a movie. Oh, dude, no, that has to be a Which show. That needs to be a show. Why too. the last man needs to definitely be a television show? That cannot be a movie, and that would be one hell of a television show because that book by Brian Vaughn was just that was the shit. It was good stuff, it dude. Was. Speaking of Brian K. Vaughn, I would effing love to see a saga television show. I don't know yet. It's still too. Uh, it's still too early. Yeah, you know which one would be good though. In the sense that it might be able to air on something like, uh, I don't know, what is it, the CW or some shit like that? Morning Glories. I haven't read any Morning Glories. Nick Spencer, Morning Glories, Image Comics. Dude, that is, it's your teen, your typical teen drama mixed with a mysterious cult religion aspect. Yeah, that totally sounds like CW material. No, but it's like tripped out shit. You said teen, I thought CW. Right, right, that's why I said. But they're, what, 30 issues deep? Uh Uh-huh. And... Every issue you read is a total mind fuck. You read it like, whoa, what the hell just happened? Like, you're not saying that because you're shocked. You really want to know what you just read because it's so deep. The story is so, it's got so many layers to it that you really, it's one of those that you have to go back and reread to get everything out of. I think if Morning Glories was a television show, dude, that thing with the right amount of uh, advertisement, Forget about it. Forget about it. And even Invincible is supposed to be picked up for a movie. And even with Robert Kirkman's name right now is supposed to be picked up, the rumor, because of, you know, this. But if you look at uh, Image Comics, anything they publish right now, every number one issue is always a sellout. Because yeah. everybody thinks it's going to be the next yeah, Walking Dead. Yeah. Which hurts it, but... I, I like Invincible, but I've read every... Well, I've read the first 13 trades, and uh, right away you can clearly see he, where he's taking stuff from. Yeah. It's like Superman mixed with like Dragon Ball Z, and it's like he's got all these elements that are clearly, yeah. if you're a nerd like us, you're into the geek culture, you can totally pick up on. Right, right, right. Like the race of guys that go around and conquer planets, dude, totally the same, totally took that from Dragon Ball Z. I don't care if he wants to admit it or not, right. that's where it came from. But uh, that's uh, issue 24 of the Spinner Rack, and mm-hmm. the end of our Walking Dead Double extravaganza. For everything Comics Remixed, go to comicsremix.com. You can find our links to our social media sites. We're on Twitter. We're on Facebook. You find links to past episodes of this, or excuse me, past episodes of Comics Remixed. Find uh, past issues of the Spinner Rack, the new segment by Carrie the Camera Guy, the 101. Links to our reviews, myself and Brian Adams, uh, our Facebook comic book reviews. You know, everything is on there. Pictures of uh, past conventions. If you uh, if you have a topic you think we should discuss here on the Spinner Rack or you want to be part of it, feel free to let us know at comicsremix at gmail.com or at the Spinner Rack at ymail.com. Let us know what you want to talk about. If we've discussed something that you disagree with or you agree with, you want to come on the show. Basically, if you want to come on the show and act a fool with us. But, you know, you got to have a reason. You can't just sit here. Otherwise, for that, we can have John and Carrie on the show. For reals. Oh, uh, no offense, guys. And even if you're not local... We can, we'll, we can we'll call figure you something in. out. We can phone it. We can figure something out. But, we're uh, we're high tech like that. So we're getting there, man. But uh, definitely let us know what you guys think of the show, whether you like it, you hate it. You know, every feedback is appreciated. So uh, thank you for listening. We'll be back. Issue 25, the big silver anniversary, man. Nice. It's got to be a big one. 2 5. I'd like to have a special guest on for that. Yeah. I'd like to. we got to figure that we'll out. we have to figure something out. Yep. Maybe we'll get Sanchez in here. No, I mean a special guest. Oh, like a special guest. Like, like a special, special. Yeah, like, holy shit, that person's hanging out with him? Like, almost a, a celebrity, kind of, in our world. Maybe we could get Balthazar. We wouldn't be able to swear. Yeah, I know. I was just going to say, you're going to have to totally tone down the language for Balthazar. You know, but we'll figure something out. I feel like I've been doing good. Let me know, Lou. It's been four or five episodes since <laughs> I issued the challenge to myself on Facebook. You Let know. me know how I'm doing. <laughs> we'll figure something out. I've got a couple people I'm nice. I'd like to have on the show. That'd be cool. Maybe so, someone from Big Dog Inc. Somebody local. Who knows? We'll figure it I out. I got a couple names. You'll I'm figure thinking. it out. I'll figure it out. I got a couple names I'm thinking. Hell, they don't even have to be comic related. 
As long as they love the, the love, they love the genre. Totally. You know, we'll figure it out. So uh, we'll talk to you guys next uh, next issue. But till then, I'm still a junior, co-host of Comics Beat. Remixed. As always, Big B Brian M. Sorry, didn't mean to like. Fucking cut me off. Like, dude. Trying to take a shine. You know? There's only two of us here, and I'm still like, hey, I gotta get in there. <laughs> <laughs> Pick up The Walking Dead if you haven't read it. Pick it up. Watch the show. Great stuff. The show. Like me, I'm actually gonna go home and watch it now. Oh yeah. All right, well, we'll see you guys next time. Take it easy. Thank you so much for listening. Peace.